Hello all, this video lecture has been made to tell you the concept of ecosystem and the components of ecosystem. Now this is a term that has been derived from two terms, eco and system. Eco relates to environment and system is any complex of coordinated units like a computer system. So this was a term that was come up with way back in 1935 by Sir Arthur George Tansley, an English botanist. He gave this term or he coined this term to recognize the integration of living things and their physical environment. To combine these two, he gave this terminology. But as per definition, ecosystem is a system or a community that is emerging from the integration and interaction of all living and non-living factors in an environment which means to say if a particular thing is present in an environment it could be a living or a non-living thing all the components that are there around that thing plus the interactions that is the integration and the interaction together is what we call as an ecosystem basically all the living and the non-living factors work together to form a big bubble that is called as ecosystem that bubble is called as an ecosystem you would have come across the terminologies environment and ecosystem being used interchangeably but there is a very marked difference between the two. Environment is only the surrounding of an organism or of a thing but ecosystem is the interaction between the environment and that organism. So that is the difference between ecosystem and environment. Environment is only the surroundings but the interaction with the surroundings is what we call as an ecosystem. That terminology has been used repeatedly. In fact, now moving from biology, we have even started using the term ecosystem for various other fields as well. But this ecosystem does not have a defined size. It could be a big ecosystem or it could be a small ecosystem. For example, as shown in the pictures here, the oceans, the forest, the mountainous areas, the lakes, the rivers, all of these are big ecosystems because they are spanning a large area. On the other hand, a farmland, a field, a terrarium, an aquarium, these are all smaller ecosystems. So the size of ecosystem is not an issue here. But what it means is that if there is a living organism that is interacting with its environment, then that particular area or that particular bubble, that particular system is what we call as an ecosystem. So ecosystem could be natural or man-made. Natural ecosystem is those which are present in nature, which has not been made by man. It is not synthetic at all. Whereas man-made are the artificial ecosystems which have arised due to certain man's activity, human's activities. These ecosystems have come up. So we have natural as well as man-made ecosystems. Natural ecosystems can be further divided into terrestrial and aquatic based on where they are found. So terrestrial ecosystems are those which are found on land like the snow capped mountains that are shown here. Aquatic ecosystems are those which are found in water. Now when we say water again that can be divided as fresh water and marine water. Fresh water ecosystems are those where there is no salt concentration, no excess salt concentration. Those are called as freshwater ecosystems. Whereas marine water ecosystems as shown here are the beaches, the oceans, the seas. Those areas which are having a higher concentration of salty water, those are called as the marine water ecosystems. Freshwater ecosystems are further divided into lentic and lotic ecosystems. Lentic ecosystem or lentic habitat is wherein we have a still or a stagnant water body, water body which is not moving. For example, a lake or a reservoir or a pond or a small pool. These are all examples of lentic ecosystems wherein the water body is stagnant or not moving or still water body. Lotic ecosystems are those wherein the water body is flowing. An easy way for you to remember is flow, low, lotic. So, lotic ecosystems are wherein the water body is in motion. For example, it could be a river or it could be a stream like shown in the picture here or it could be a waterfall. So, any ecosystem wherein any freshwater body which is moving is called as a lotic ecosystem or a lotic habitat and the ecosystem where the water body is still or it is stagnant that is called as a lentic habitat or a lentic ecosystem. 
please keep in mind both of these are examples of freshwater ecosystem the reason being in marine water there is always movement that is present it could be a slow movement but there is always a tide there is always a movement so in marine water ecosystems there are no still and moving waters it's all coming under one category that is marine water ecosystem however fresh water ecosystem can be divided into still water that is lentic ecosystem and flowing water that is lotic ecosystem the man made ecosystems include like i showed you here that is the field that is a farmland or a cropland it could be an aquarium it could be a small swimming pool so anything that has come up or that has arisen due to human activities which is artificially made that is called as a man made ecosystem now there is another terminology that you might be coming across in your textbooks or in your studies that is biome biome is an a large area which is characterized by plants and animals that are adapted to that particular area and the weather of that region so if i have a forest biome i have animals and plants which are adapted to that particular region that is why that large area is called as a biome the difference between biome and ecosystem is that within a single biome i could have multiple ecosystems so we'll be looking at biomes in my other videos but there is a terminology that is called as biome which you should be aware of because biomes are much larger areas and can comprise of several ecosystems within it so this was a brief classification of ecosystems that is natural and man made ecosystems now in an ecosystem there are several components mainly there are two components abiotic that is the non living component and biotic that is a living component this can be also asked in the in your exams as structure of ecosystem so structure of ecosystem or components of ecosystem calls for you to write about abiotic and biotic factors or abiotic and biotic components abiotic components are the non living components this includes the physical factors like air the water that we are drinking light that we are obtaining the land that we live on temperature humidity all of these factors together are called as the physical factors then chemical factors are the inorganic elements that we are taking in like nitrogen sulfur phosphorus the organic elements the organic substances that we are taking in like carbohydrates fats proteins so all of these chemical elements that we are absorbing or we are eating or we are taking in that is called as the chemical factor so the physical and chemical factor together makes up the non living component or the abiotic component of an ecosystem the biotic component is the living component so bio wherever you get the terminology bio it means it's the living component so anything that is related to a living organism is what we put as bio biology biosphere etc so biotic component is the living component of an ecosystem now this is divided into different types based on what that living component is using for energy or what is its food based on that we have divided the living component or the biotic component into three groups producers consumers and decomposers let us look at each one of these so producers are the plants p for plants p for producers producers are organisms that are obtaining their energy from the sun and they are preparing or producing their own food basically they know to do how they know to do photosynthesis you and i don't know to do photosynthesis but plants can do photosynthesis so there are organisms mainly plants it also includes a few bacteria which are capable of producing their own food so those organisms which are using their energy from the sun and producing their own food just remember these forests that are there this picture shows you that producers are involved actively in photosynthesis and they are producing their own food hence they are called as producers because they are capable of utilizing the sun's energy to prepare their own food they are also called as autotrophs auto here is signifying self they are making their food by themselves hence they are also called as autotrophs so the first type of biotic factor or biotic component that is present in an ecosystem is the producers producers or autotrophs are capable of utilizing the sun's energy and preparing their own food 
this includes an example for this includes all the plants or most of the plants and certain bacteria certain photosynthetic bacteria the next category for of the biotic component are the consumers now consumers are incapable of producing their own food they cannot prepare their own food they need to either eat their food or absorb their food they have to get it from somewhere else so consumers are obtaining or deriving their food directly from the producers that is they are eating plants or they may be eating other living organisms whatever it is they are not preparing their own food they are deriving their food from producers or from other living organisms such organisms are called as consumers they are consuming food pre prepared food they don't know to produce their food consumers are also called as heterotrophs the reason being they don't know to prepare their own food they have to derive their food from somewhere else hence they are called as heterotrophs there are different types of consumers which we will be looking at in a few minutes the third type of biotic component are the decomposers decomposers are also heterotrophs because these two cannot prepare their own food they have to absorb the nutrition they have to get the nutrition they have to derive the nutrition from somewhere else but the difference between consumers and decomposers is that decomposers are capable of absorbing the nutrition from even dead organisms they can absorb the nutrition from dead producers or dead consumers dead plants or dead animals from anywhere even if the it is a dead animal or a dead plant decomposers are capable of absorbing the nutrition from there are capable of getting their food from there hence they are called as decomposers though they are heterotrophs they are different from consumers under decomposers we also have two more groups of organisms those you would have heard in your lectures or in your textbooks you would have seen in the competitive exams you would have come across this those terminologies are detritivores and scavengers now the difference between these three let me tell you that which is not very clear in many of the textbooks is that scavengers are animals that consume dead organisms which have been killed by other organisms other predators so other animals come and kill a particular organism and these scavengers are scavenging it that means they are feeding on the dead meat they are feeding on the dead organism a very good example for that are vultures which is shown over here vultures are feeding on a carcass that has been killed by some other animal so they don't do the hunting part they don't go and hunt and kill an organism but they eat dead meat meat which is freshly dead that is the meat that they are going to eat so they are capable of consuming dead organisms which have been killed by other predators the other examples for scavengers are raccoons hyena crabs in an aquatic ecosystem crabs are a very good example opossum so all of these are organisms or animals which are coming under scavengers they are scavenging the food someone else is killing it and these are going and eating the dead meat they are not hunting and killing detritivores are organisms which show oral feeding okay they are going to eat they are actually going to eat like how humans eat food even detritivores eat the food they show oral feeding pattern they are also feeding on detritus that is they are feeding on waste matter that waste matter could be a fecal matter it could be feces it could be a dead and decaying leaf litter it could be a rotting animal it could be anything which is waste which is dead which is decaying that kind of matter when they are able to eat those are called as detritivores detritivores examples include lizards termites um, slugs there are certain uh, bugs that are there earthworms what is shown over here or some snails dung beetles there are there is a group of beetles which is called as dung beetles it lives on animal matter on animal fecal matter so all of these cockroaches all of these are detritivores because they are capable of feeding on any dead and decaying matter they don't want freshly dead meat like scavengers they can eat any dead and decaying matter those are called as detritivores the third category under this are decomposers decomposers term is mainly used for microorganisms because unlike detritivores microorganisms or decomposers do not eat their food unlike humans microorganisms don't open their mouth and eat it instead 
they release certain enzymes which will break down the dead and decaying matter and thus they are able to absorb the nutrition. So, the subtle difference between the three is that all three of them are involved in eating dead and decaying matter. Scavengers are those which are going to eat organisms or animals that have been killed by other organisms. They show oral feeding pattern. Detritivores also show oral feeding pattern but they can feed even on waste material. They don't need a dead organism. They can even feed on dead and decaying fecal matter on something that is rotting, some rotting wood, anything that is rotting or waste or detritus, they detritivores can feed on it. Decomposers can also feed on dead and decaying matter but they don't show oral feeding. Instead, they release enzymes and absorb their nourishment through the enzymes. So, that is the very key difference between decomposers, detritivores and scavengers which is all forming part of the third community that is decomposers. All three of them are considered under the third group of biotic component in the ecosystem. The consumers are further divided into three types. So, what we looked at are abiotic components which includes physical and chemical factors, biotic components which includes producers that produce their own food, consumers which uh, take their food from somewhere else and decomposers which includes detritivores and scavengers that are absorbing food from dead and decaying matter. So, the consumers are eating live food but what are they eating based on that they are divided again into, into three types. The first one are primary consumers. Those consumers which are feeding directly upon the producers in simple words, those animals which are feeding directly on the plants are called as primary consumers. These are also called as herbivores. So, herbivores are animals that are directly feeding on the plants or directly feeding on the producers. Those animals are called as primary consumers. Example shown here is deer. It could be a rabbit. So, anything that is directly feeding on the plants is called as a herbivore or as a primary consumer, cattle, sheep, goat, all of these are examples of primary consumers. Secondary consumers are carnivores. These were herbivores. Secondary consumers are carnivores. Carnivores are animals or they are organisms that feed on primary consumers. This includes animals like lion, tiger, what is shown here in the picture is a crocodile. It includes certain carnivorous plants which eat other animals. So, secondary consumers or carnivores feed on primary consumers. Those are called as secondary. Primary is first, they are feeding on producers. Secondary are feeding on primary consumer. The third group of consumers are tertiary consumers. Now, tertiary consumers can be either carnivores that is, they are completely carnivorous. They are feeding only on other carnivores. They are feeding on secondary carnivores. So, they are feeding on other animals and they are usually called as the apex predators. So, we will be studying about food chain. You will see that apex predators are those animals which are not having any natural enemy. Like a lion in a forest, a lion is, a, is an apex predator or a tiger is an apex predator because their only natural enemy is of their own species or human being. They don't have any other predator. In an aquatic ecosystem, shark is an apex predator. So, the tertiary consumer eats the secondary consumer and the tertiary consumer could be a carnivore which is usually an apex predator or the tertiary consumer could be an omnivore. Omnivores are animals that eat or organisms that eat both producers as well as consumers. For example, human being. So, human being is an example of an omnivore which is also acting as a tertiary consumer. We are capable of digesting both vegetarian food that is a plant food as well as animal based food. Hence, human beings are one example of tertiary consumers and we are omnivorous or we are omnivores. So, the tertiary consumers are usually at the top of the food chain. They are the ones which cannot, like I said, they cannot be eaten or they cannot be attacked by any other organism, usually except human beings or their own species. So, tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers or they may eat secondary, primary and producers. In that case, they are called as omnivores. Omnivores is a term that you will see even lower in the food chain. Not all 
consumers are omnivores you will even find some which are lower in the food chain for example pigs dogs that is why i have shown here squirrel these are also omnivores but they are found lower in the food chain so when we look at food chain you will understand that omnivores could either act as tertiary consumer that is at the top of the food chain or they may be some present somewhere lower in the food chain as well so these are the three types of consumers primary those which eat the producers secondary those which eat the primary consumers and tertiary those which eat the secondary consumers or those which are capable of eating both secondary consumer and it can eat the producers as well so the tertiary consumer could either be a complete carnivore or it could be an omnivore so this was about the structure of an ecosystem ecosystems components include abiotic and biotic components abiotic components include the no physical and the chemical factors which make up the non living component and the biotic component includes producers that is the plants consumers that includes primary secondary tertiary consumers decomposers which includes microorganisms the detritivores and scavengers now all of these components the abiotic the biotic the consumers the producers all of these together are having certain roles in an ecosystem they have certain job to do their job first job is to regulate the flow of energy so in an ecosystem from where the energy is flowing that is the first role of an ecosystem that is the first significance of an ecosystem and the second significance is to regulate the flow of nutrients that is the cycling of nutrients flow of different materials flow of food all that is also the second function or role of an ecosystem so in an ecosystem there are biotic and abiotic components which are contributing to the flow of energy and the flow of materials or in other words flow of nutrients so these two functions we'll be looking at in the other video lectures under which we'll be having energy flow in an ecosystem we will be looking at food chain food web ecological pyramid and nutrient cycling all of these functions are basically governed by these two which are shown over here it is the flow of energy and the flow of nutrients which is giving rise to all of these sub topics that will be handled in the further lectures i hope this class was of use to all of you and you remember the definition and the structure of an ecosystem thank you